I'd like to introduce Dr. Kent Holtoff, the founder and medical director of the Holtoff Medical Group. Thank you for joining me, Kent. Thanks for having me. Could you tell me when you first heard about LDN? Oh, that, that's a very good question. When you first heard about LDN, and I, it must have been years ago. Um, and but I really, you know, it's, I think really the um, knowledge and and get, getting out there to the lay people has really exploded over the last several years. But we've been using it for I would have to say, you know, close to ten years now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, how did you go about prescribing it? What kind of patients did you have initially? And we, you know, when we decide who to prescribe it to, it's really expanded. And you know, we first prescribed it to you know the basic autoimmune disease, and we treat a lot of Hashimoto's, and that was I think our first indication. And we found for a good percentage of patients that it lowered those antibodies. You know, and they go to their endocrinologist, who they just oftentimes don't even test the antibodies because they say, well, you can't do anything about it. But now you have we have a tool to to really lower the antibodies and basically uh, address the illness at at the cause. Mm -hmm. And but what we're finding is that you really it's it works for a lot more conditions than just so-called autoimmune disease, but anything that has immune dysfunction, which is so common, um, you know, for instance, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, uh, asthma, you know, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, depression. You know, all these things have immune imbalance, and low dose can be very beneficial. So you know, normally there's two sides to the immune system. There's in generally you could say Th1 and Th2. Th1 gets stuff inside the cell, and Th2 gets stuff outside the cell. And usually they're balanced. But in some of these conditions, the Th2 is too low, Th2 is too high, and we see a lot with chronic fatigue syndrome and chronic infections, chronic Lyme disease. And so what happens is people just you know, when, well, let's say let's uh, step back. Let's say you get the flu. You say, God, I feel bad because I have the flu. Well, not really. You feel bad because you're immune, uh, because you have basically immune dysfunction. Th2 is too high. It's causing a lot of inflammatory cytokines, and you, so you get that achiness, the brain fog, all, all of that. And the lotus naltrexone can be very effective at kind of snapping that immune system back. So conditions that aren't even so-called autoimmune can uh, benefit from lotus naltrexone. Mm -hmm. And what would you say the percentage of the success rate is of the patients that have tried LDN? Um, I would say probably at least uh, the majority. I would say about half. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is it's, if it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. You, you don't get you know, so rare to have any side effect and you've never seen any significant side effect that's dangerous, which you know, compare it to other you know, prescription medications, it's just you know, probably the side effect profile is about the same as placebo. And um, what do you normally prescribe? Um, capsules or liquid cream? Yeah, you know, we usually do the 4.5 milligrams uh, capsule, uh, compounded capsule. And there are a few patients that you know, and they'll tell you right off the bat, God, I'm so sensitive, and we may start at 0.5 and kind of work up from there. But in general, we use the the 4.5. Um, we'll now for another indication, which you know, the low dose works for immune modulation. At higher doses. Uh, we we'll use it for weight loss, so get into the, you know, uh, 10, 20, 30 milligrams for weight loss. Goodness, I've not heard that before. Yeah, so an actual will probably be approved here in the next year or two, combined with Wellbutrin, significant weight loss associated with it, um, and uh, and so there again, there's the phase four trials right now going on, but you can use it together with Wellbutrin for for weight loss. We're having great success with that. Hmm. It's interesting because somebody asked me the other day they had gained weight while taking LDN and they wondered if it was the LDN that had caused it. Uh, yeah, that we hardly ever see that. Um, and because also when you see that kind of with the TH, TH1, TH2 imbalance, you get a lot of this cellular inflammation. So you get a lot of thyroid resistance, leptin resistance. So it can help with weight loss. You know, it's like uh, it's kind of like with when you see diabetes, you get once you get diabetes, it's it's a, it's a vicious cycle because that inflammation that's caused by the, the high insulin, uh, you get a thyroid resistance, it lowers thyroid levels, lowers metabolism. So it can work with things like diabetes and lowering that inflammation and all of a sudden thyroid starts working, getting into the cells, other hormones start working. So it has a much broader range of effectiveness than I think, you know, just kind of the standard autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. And are all your doctors comfortable with prescribing LDN? But I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Sorry, are all your doctors happy to prescribe LDN? 
Yeah, it, it's very because again, you look at risk benefit, and the risk is is minuscule. So um, there's really no reason not to give it a try for patients. Mm -hmm. And if the people listening are looking for a doctor to prescribe LDN, where do you have your offices? Um, so our offices, our home base is in Torrance, California, with Southern California. We have another office in Pasadena, uh, Northern California by San Francisco, uh, Utah, uh, Atlanta, and Philadelphia currently. So it's quite spread out really, isn't it? They're not that close together. Yeah, and we get patients coming from all over, you know, other states and other countries as well. Mm -hmm. That's good. So. Is there anything else that you could say that you think would be of benefit to people who are contemplating trying LDM? You know, I, I think it's interesting. And, you know, they say, well, how can I get my doctor to do it? And it's in, and uh, I've read a number of papers on, you know, why, it, it's so funny, patients will, you know, tell their doctor about it and they'll say, just stop reading the internet. There's no studies on it. Well, there's no studies if you don't look. And I think the way medicine has evolved, it's doctors are so unwilling to kind of look outside the box. You know, they're just... They're just buried and having to see so many patients, and you know, especially in America, we're kind of following the European model where it's it's mass medicine, and uh, and doctors no longer look at physiology. They don't, you know, they they don't even try to understand anything anymore. They just basically say, oh, you have this diagnosis. Well, the insurance company says you get this or this. Lotus well, Altrex said I don't know anything about that, and you know, I don't care to read any studies because you know I can't really do it anyways, and there's no benefit. You know, for, for doctors now, it's just who can see the most patients, and the doctors who care least are the ones that do well in the system. If you start caring, you know, you're going to be frustrated, you know, taking tough patients and trying to spend more time with patients, and it's basically you don't, you, you make less than the doctor who doesn't care and just grinds the patients through. So the whole system is, is a problem, and, and it's funny how, you know, medications like this, which are exceedingly safe and can be very effective, just doctors just aren't interested in prescribing it. So it's 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 frustrating for you know, a lot of doctors to see that, and especially for patients. Mm -hmm. And what's the dropout rate like for people starting LDM? Um, you know, we say, hey, if, you know, we have so many tools for so many you know, chronic illness, and um, you know, we basically specialize in illnesses that that aren't treated very well, and you know, kind of standard medical protocols, which is almost everything now. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. especially complex multi-system illness, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, a lot of endocrine dysfunction, and um, and and so it, it's really, you know, I think hard to find doctors that are willing to, to look at all those things. And and we say, well, if something doesn't work, just stop it and we'll move on. You want to make sure you know they're taking it right. And occasionally people will say you get a little insomnia with it. They take it at, at bedtime. Um, and usually that goes away, but we'll say, hey, take it during the day. If that does work, and we find that works just as well, although the kind of standard is to take it at night, but we find that taking it during the day works, um, uh, not, not a problem. So usually uh, then we'll, if it, you know, if it doesn't seem to be beneficial, we'll, we'll stop it, but I mean, I've never seen anyone have a serious side effect from it. So you use LDN for thyroid conditions? Yeah, it's certainly our, our go-to medication for Hashimoto's thyroiditis where the body's attacking the thyroid. But it, it does more than that because when you have the high antibodies, it causes inflammation at the cellular level. And if you go to our nonprofit site, the National Academy of Hypothyroidism, nahypothyroidism.org, it has really hundreds of studies talking about thyroid resistance where basically there's thyroid in the blood, but it's not doing anything. It's not getting into the cells. And it talks a lot about thyroid transport, which is the key to understanding levels where people go, God, my levels look, look strange, they look normal, but how come I'm having all these symptoms? So typically what you'll see is, is a low normal TSH, a high T4, a low T3, a low normal T3, and a high normal reverse T3, which is a sign of hypothyroidism, actually. And many doctors go, oh, you're a little hyper because your TSH is, is a little on the low side and your T4 is on the high side. We see that the, the, the quintessential um, uh, condition is depression, and that's what they see, and they've been thought that, oh, depression's kind of, you know, uh, borderline high, but it's the opposite because um, what happens is T4 and T3 have different transporters. Um, and they're active transport. They need energy. The T4 transporter is much more energy dependent. So anything that has to do with inflammation, lowering cellular energy, such as diabetes, chronic fatigue syndrome, any mitochondrial dysfunction, the T4 transporter doesn't work very well. Um, and the T3 transporter is affected much, uh, much less so. 
Um, and so what you see actually is that the TSH will drop because the pituitary is not affected, but the cell don't, doesn't transport T4, in, and so the T4 actually goes up. And so you'll see, again, the slightly low T TSH, higher normal T4, low normal T3, and high normal reverse T3, which is the key. Um, and, what, and I'll talk about how this has to do with LDN. But the high reverse T3, reverse T3 has the same transporter as T4. So if you have a high reverse T3, you know two things. The body's not, the cells aren't taking in T4, and that T4 is not a good, is not a good way to replace those patients. It just doesn't work very well. And we see that a lot also with Hashimoto's, any autoimmune disease. Um, you'll see that any chronic inflammation. And lotus naltrexone can help that. It, it, again, modulates that immune system, lowers the antibodies, and also, in a more global sense, uh, lowers that inflammation that's causing that really thyroid resistance from the poor transport of T4. So um, it's one tool for even just people who have general hypothyroidism with any chronic illness because it, it can help that transport. And it gets a little complicated, but there's hundreds of studies there and diagrams on our nonprofit site, again, the National Academy of Hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. And Graves' disease and Sjogren's syndrome, they have a thyroid element to it. Is that right? Yeah, so like, for instance, Graves', you know, which is hyperthyroidism, is, is, and Hashimoto's are the same illness. Right. The body's attacking the thyroid, but if it, uh, antibodies happen to hit the TSH receptor and stimulate the thyroid, it goes hyper. Um, if it doesn't, it's hypo and they're, they're destroying the thyroid. So almost everyone with Graves also has Hashimoto's, but they just have an additional um, antibody that's attaching to the TSH receptor. Now, a couple interesting studies um, in the Lancet, you know, major medical journal, mm -hmm. um, they did thyroid biopsies in people who were just fatigued. They're, that was the condition they were fatigued. They found the majority had thyroid inflammation even though their antibodies were negative. And they gave them all thyroid and they responded irrespective of what their, their, their baseline thyroid levels were. So it really shows that you know, all, most people that are fatigued have many, uh, you know, actually over 50% will have thyroid inflammation that's not detected on the, on the blood test. So another reason to use lotus naltrexone in just so-called run-of-the-mill low thyroid mm -hmm. or just fatigue. And what about Sjogren's syndrome? Yeah, I mean, all, all those, um, you know, rheumatological illnesses, lotus naltrexone is going to be very effective. Um, and it's, it's going to be kind of really the go-to um, uh, treatment for those. Well, thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. I really do appreciate it. Great. Uh, thank you.